Good evening, good evening. Welcome to the North Division for Evaluation and Scripture Speech Contest. We apologize for running just a little bit late, but we're glad that everybody's here. And as we close the doors, Why? how's everyone doing tonight? Not as a 
tangible benefits. But every one of us gets some of it. We take away something new when we go out that door, including happy memories. So now we ask you to turn off your cell phones, so you can make sounds, your cell phones, your beepers, your blackberry, your apple, your strawberry, your oranges. Please turn them off. Thank you so much. We will have two contests tonight, the humorous speech contest and the speech evaluation contest. The first contest will be the speech evaluation contest. When the contest has concluded, we will have a 10 minutes break and enjoy some more of our refreshments. <coughs> After the break, we will conduct the humorous speech contest. All contestants, timers, ballot counters, and target at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave this room during the contest presentation. You may do so if time permits during the minute of silence between the presentation. Thank you, and with that, let the contest <laughs> Automatic warnings flashed across the country. A computer-generated 
big announcement interrupts the Javanese parliament broadcast. The waves violently shake the ground from side to side. Already, long as the hand is descending to tears. The seismic waves travel on 93 miles southwest of the epicenter. They slam into Fukushima Daishi, home to an aging power plant. Housing <coughs> Sensors automatically shut down the reactor core, but in, the intense heat generated by the nuclear reaction does not dissipate. The core still is extremely hot. With the reactor, there is no power to drive the cooling pump. The reactor core heats up and up and up. Emergency diesel generator takes over, pumping cooling through the reactor. The Fukushima reactors survive the earthquake. Scientists at the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in Hawaii, 3,800 miles away, receive an emergency alert. Researchers around the world watch the event unfold. First indication, a magnitude of around 7. But the data keeps flying in. The numbers start to climb. 7.5, 7.7, until 8.3, 8.5, 8.8. The scientists think this is something wrong. There's something wrong with the data. Because in the history of Japan, there has never been any earthquake larger than 8. They finally realized that they are dealing with a quick. So big this is going to affect the entire Pacific Basin. What is the source of this disaster? It lies 62 miles off Japan, Japan's coast. Four miles below the surface of the Earth is destroyed. Caught in a vast slow motion pollution. The Earth crust is made up of continental sized plates, tectonic plates. Japan is on the Jurassic plate that compresses and buckles as the Pacific plate lies underneath and it moves at three inches a year, snagging and catching it as it goes. Over centuries, a pressure builds up, then suddenly the earth snaps. Just like an elastic band, causing an A hundred seconds later, the waves reach Tokyo. The city has 60 seconds one. The earth shakes and shakes and shakes. It kept going, going, going for unprecedented five minutes instead of the usual ten, five seconds. Most buildings just stand. Japan's earthquake prevention system works. Scientists upgrade the earthquake to a magnitude 9.0. A thousand times more powerful than the 2010 Haiti earthquake. Everyone in Japan knows it is far from the The power is about to unleash another devastating force. For centuries, the Eurasian plate is dragged downward by the Pacific plate winding up. But when the earthquake happened, it springs back like a rubber band. Oh. The upward motion thrusts a four mile deep of water, water upward. When the dome of water collapses, immense back waves race out across the ocean. A tsunami is here. This placing a massive amount of water across the ocean. One side across the Pacific, the other races to a Japan at the speed of a Japan. As it approaches the shore, the rear 
know how fast moving waves push the sea of water up into a rising sea. 20 minutes after the earthquake, the tsunami hits the first coast town. Lebron, 10 billion, billion tons of water rushes in, engulfing the entire town. 30 feet sea walls offer no protection. Why? Because the coastline has dropped more than 3 feet, lowering the sea. And it allows the tsunami to rush over the nuclear reactor. The reactor cores continue to generate heat, and finally the hydrogen exploded. Could this happen to the U.S.? The West Coast sits on the top, on top of the North American plate that butts the Pacific plate. It is a disaster. The U.S. is not as well equipped with the defense system against the quakes or tsunami as you can. This is something we think about. Um, <laughs> we will now give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluation. Sergeant at the can you please escort our contestants out of the room and give them five minutes to assume their seated. When the five minutes is over, please bring back the first contestant, contestant back to you. Wow. 
well. <laughs> but there's some special things coming from this conference, and I know you can't wait. First of all, it's at the O'Hare area at the Marriott Renaissance, where we had TLI in January, for those of you who went down there. And this is an all suites hotel, so if you happen to stay overnight, we can party in your room, let us go. <laughs> And we're having, I think it's this guy, Jared, what's this guy's name? Darren LaCroix? Darren LaCroix. Darren LaCroix. And he is a world-renowned, world champion of the International Speech Contest from 2001. And we think, Jerry told me to say this, he's paying you money. No, that's for that. <laughs> but he's one of the best speakers around. He's giving three presentations at the fall conference. If you are an achiever and have won an educational award, or can complete an educational award by October 31st, trick or treat. Treat, because you get a free breakfast at the fall conference and hear Darren LaCroix talk about something exciting. How cool is that? How many of you guys are achievers already? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Madam Toastmaster, one minute. Thank you so much. Virginia Wasserman, contestant number one, evaluation contestant number one, Virginia Wasserman.
Toastmasters Master dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters, and all of you wonderful guests who came out on a Friday night to spend with us, and especially Monet. What a dramatic story <coughs> you had to tell. And it was so filled with facts and information that we heard on the news, we read in the paper, we saw on the internet. But you told a personal story about your <coughs> and what happened <coughs> there to all of the people that you know and love. Because it had so much information, I understand why you would want to read it. And because this is a large room and we have a microphone, why you would want to stay in the podium. But Toastmasters teaches us to move away from the podium. We have a large area. You can take the microphone with you. So in the future, you might want to when you're doing a speech that maybe has a little less detail that you need to quote, venture away, even if you only step a little away. You can still come back to your notes. But you did give us so much information. And you used a lot of local <coughs> variety. <coughs> louder and do that stop. When we do that, we have to be careful. Sometimes when we get soft, people can't hear. But when you got louder, when you were talking about the tsunami and it, how it rubber bands back, even though you were still here at the podium, saw the arms come out like a rubber band. And I was hoping so much that you were going to do that in the speech. Because there were so many times that you could have still stayed right here. And you could have said 7.3, 7.5, 7.8. And we would have had so much more impact. you talked about the plates, you could have talked about a plate, and a plate, <coughs> and the plates. You did use some hand gestures towards the end, and I would ask you to try to incorporate more of that in the future. And a few more pauses. Your diction was very good. And I could understand you even though I was pretty far back. <coughs> the problem with a microphone is someone we step away from it, people can't hear us. So you have to be careful when you're speaking slowly. Use your pauses. And especially at the end, when you say, this could happen here. Are we prepared? That was so powerful. Thank you so much, and I look forward to more. Thank you. May we have one minute of silence, please?
Madam Toastmaster, one minute. George Schultz, contestant number two, contestant number two, George Schultz.
Madam Toastmaster, one minute. Kevin Henderson, contestant number three. Contestant number three, Kevin Henderson. What a powerful speech. What a powerful speech. Madam Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, dignitaries, guests, and especially you, Monet, thank you so much for sharing your speech with us today. It's a tough topic, one that's really hard to address, especially when it's personal to you. I've heard stories because we have a, a division of my company that's in Japan. I've got members of our Toastmasters clubs whose spouse is from Japan. So I have heard stories about the earthquake since it happened. And I have to tell you that your portrayal of that through your speech was one of the most powerful that I've heard. Your use of vivid imagery right from the get-go as you open your speech really drew the attention of the entire audience in. Even before you greeted the, the audience and the dignitaries. It was a little bit of a challenge as you spoke, I think you made a good choice to use the microphone because your voice doesn't really carry out in the, the room. But it was a little bit of a challenge because as you look down at the notes that the microphone didn't pick up as much as we would have. So sometimes we lost at the end of your sentences exactly the power that we wanted to have out of that. Again with the microphone, a little bit of a challenge because it limited you to one space. And I think there are times when your gestures, which I could see uh, as you're the shaking of the plates, they're a little bit hidden behind the lectern, and I think the speech would have been even more powerful if you could use the full speaking area and walk out and, and share with each portion of the audience how you really felt about it, because I could see it bursting out of your body. Your use of pauses and the pace of your speech is one of the best I've ever heard. It really kept us going throughout the entire speech, and I really appreciated that, and we'll look at that. It's something I would like to incorporate into my own speeches in the future. As we get to the conclusion of your speech, I think you got a little bit rushed, and as you started to conclude, I lost your entire last sentence. So I wouldn't mind if you would tell me later what that was. <laughs> as I conclude, I'd just like to thank you very much for sharing your story and for having the willingness to get not just one evaluation, but six tonight. <laughs> and I would look forward to hearing more about this speech in the future. Madam Contest Master. Madam Toastmaster, one minute. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> contestant number four, contestant number four, Sandy. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and our honored guests, we're glad to have you here. Congratulations on giving this speech in front of this audience and also being critiqued six times for the evaluation. I thought that you gave a very informative speech. You had a lot of statistics, and probably one of your strongest points was 
the ability to use the pause. When you're behind the podium here, you, because you have a lot of statistical information that you're providing us, you tended to read quite a bit. But even though you read a lot, you were very effective in looking at your audience from different places. So from time to time, you would look at different places within the audience. One of the things you want to be aware of when you're speaking, as all of us have to do, is try to assess very rapidly what is the nature of the audience. If I happen to be a person that has that's from Boston, and I have an accent or anything else, I might want to be able to aware of that accent. And would my audience be able to hear that properly, or should I adjust it? Same way if you happen to be a person from New York and you talk about the past and everything else like that, and there might be some people in here that are a little bit older, they may not hear that well. So you want to kind of adjust that. And sometimes you can't always tell that, and you look out at the audience, we all make stereotypical judgments of what the audience here, and maybe if it's a real young group, well then you speed it up a little bit. But I've never had anybody complain about talking too slow. Okay? But you had some of those things, so those are some of the things that you want to think about with the audience as you read your pauses, but again, because of a lot of the reading, not so much the hand gestures. Nevertheless, you had great word pictures that you brought out. A lot of times the word pictures that you did, particularly one that I remember, is you talked about the rubber band and it's springing back. That could have been used and incorporated a hand gesture in that it's springing back. It's just some things as you practice. It appeared that your speech went a little bit long from here, and so you adjust that based upon practicing a little bit. So you look at that and adjust that. I thought that you had a lot of good information that you gave, but it was not real clear to me exactly what was your purpose. When you're doing that, you want to start out with an opener, a body, and a closing. Ideally, you would kind of tie those together, particularly in the closing. But as you did that, I wasn't real confident of how you finished off. It just seemed somewhat that you stopped. So I think if you practice a little bit more, that will help. Because of your gestures that you have, and again, this adapting to the audience, what do I have around here, is your voice would trail off. I think if you take these few things, you'll have a very good, powerful speech. Madam Toastmaster, one minute. <coughs> Sabil Ahmed, contestant number five, contestant number five, Sabil Ahmed. Thomas Edison, he invented the electric light. October 21st, 2011, Monet, she gave an electrifying speech for us. <laughs> Monet, she did very dramatized speech that was irresistibly filled with high action, high emotion, and all of those with radiant energy coming from her. Dantas Chair, fellow Toastmasters, my dear guest, especially Monet. Where are you, Monet? <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor for me to evaluate such a wonderful and distinguished speaker. The topic that she has chosen 
the topic of killer earthquake. It is very relevant. As I was reading the newspaper just yesterday, San Francisco, it had an earthquake. Fortunately, no damage, no casualties happened. But earthquake is a very relevant topic for our day and age. Literally thousands of earthquakes they have. The topic was very good. When she gave the introduction, standing up there, she dwelt right into the earthquake it, uh, itself. The ground was shaking, the tsunami was coming, and she drew everyone into what she was mentioning. I was feeling that I was there, and I wanted to run away from the earthquake. That was the feeling she created. Now the body of her presentation was very good. First she mentioned how the earthquake happened, then the cause of the earthquake, and some of the preventive measure that people could take. So when she was mentioning all the statistics about the earthquake, it was wonderful, me not being a PhD in earthquakeology, right? <laughs> I was able to relate what she was saying. I was able to understand the, the examples that she gave. When she went to the cause of the earthquake, about all the fault lines and all of the things that she mentioned up there, how I am now better informed about the earthquakes. When she mentioned the statistics about the 93 miles per hour and the thousand year uh, earthquake, it never happened like that. And the 8 point or 9.0 Richter scale earthquake. All of these statistics, they added an extra layer to, to add to her credibility. So what are some of the suggestions for you, Monet? Two suggestions. Look at the stage up here. This stage is every speaker's dream, right? Yeah. Walk up here. Our treasurer, I don't think she's going to, or he's going to charge you extra. <laughs> 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 so use the stage, connect with the audience, very important. Second suggestion is a closing. Your closing was good, but try to make your closing more powerful because it is what people take home with. So your closing could be that, yeah, so your closing could be that we all have to work together to, to make sure that if there is an earthquake over here, that we don't have any casualties. So Monet, wonderful speech, great hand gestures, and you are hitting all the marks. And if you follow these suggestions, your speech is going to be not good, not just great, it will be magical. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, one minute. Thank you. Alex Kripko, contestant number six. Contestant number six, Alex Kripko. Like you're being there, 
listen in the place where the earthquake is happening. She uses vocal variety very effectively when she's talking about how the data rises and rises and rises as the data rises, her voice rises. She's able to project the calamity that was Japan's massive earthquake. Excellent, excellent story development and use of analysis. She always asks the questions, how did it happen? Why did it happen? And can it happen again? And she's able to answer those questions. It is, as a person that watched the horrific events on TV, you want to understand the cause of the event happening. And Monet drives the facts home with very good research, very good knowledge of the events, and also with the ability for people to picture the human element, the human catastrophe that the earthquake was. One thing I would have liked to see a little bit more is maybe the use of the room that moving from side to side, engaging the audience that way. For the most part, she stood still near the lectern, which by itself is fine, but to get the full audience to see, it's often good to move from side to side and then that way engage the audience. The other thing that would have been possibly helpful too would be the use of visuals. A picture speaks a thousand words, and the use of visuals could have even further reinforced us seeing what a catastrophe it was. But overall, what a wonderful speech. It was entertaining. It was very well spoken with a lot of passion. And also, it was able to teach us a lot about what happened and to ask a lot of questions to ourselves. Could this happen again? Thank you very much.
all the ballots are accounted for. Thank you. Please enjoy the refreshment. We will have a 10-minute break.